how we're going to improve nitric oxide levels since it's such an important molecule for human health. So I mentioned before that when we're young, we rely on a certain pathway for making nitric oxide, and that is the L-arginine pathway. So L-arginine plus oxygen can be converted by the activity of an enzyme or nitric oxide synthase into nitric oxide. And this is created in the endothelium of the blood vessels, and it is not typically related to a dietary nitrates. So we can produce this on demand and we can supply the nitric oxide and create all the biological effects we are looking for, for by this, uh, the presence of this molecule. Now, that is actually pretty efficient up to the age of 40, averagely. After that, it starts declining pretty significantly. And actually, at the age of 40, we hit a lowering in the production that averagely, for the average American, is 50% less than what we should be making on a standard basis. But we have another pathway for making nitric oxide, and that is the nitrate reduction. So dietary nitrates, they can be converted through the oral microbiome activity into nitrites. So they get reduced into nitrites. And those nitrites, when we swallow them, they can get reduced furthermore into nitric oxide. But as I said before, this is related first to the conversion of nitrates into nitrites, and that is mediated by the oral microbiome. Now, what we are doing, unfortunately, on the traditional basis is affecting the oral microbiome to the point that we're diminishing the efficiency of this pathway and the conversion of nitrates into nitrites so they can get further reduced into nitric oxide. And we need to really empower this pathway because, again, we know that the other pathway start declining by various reasons after the age of 40, averagely. The women, they stay a little bit better on that pathway for a longer time, but still declines over the, the course of aging. And definitely we need to empower this pathway, the other pathway, much more eventually at some point of their lives. That we need to know now how we're going to build back our nitric oxide production, knowing that there's so many things that are affecting the nitric oxide uh, production coming from the dietary nitrate uh, reduction pathway. So first of all, we need to build our nitrate uh, pathway. And for that, basically, first of all, diet, increasing the consumption of nitrate-rich foods, that will provide dietary nitrates that will support this pathway. But also we know that there is a certain deficiency in the amount of nitrates that we can find in our foods daily. And nowadays, because of these deficiencies, not only nitrates, but many other nutrients that are not found in certain density in foods as it was probably 100 years ago or 50 years ago, there's a need for supplementation. So I'm always recommending that at least 300 to 400 milligrams of nitrates are necessary to start seeing clinical changes in the blood pressure and other aspects that are of the body functions that are related to normal levels of nitric oxide production, especially based on the dietary nitrate conversion to nitric oxide. Now, lifestyle is critical. We know that physical activity is critical for producing nitric oxide in normal amounts. Also, the, your sleep quality, your levels of stress, things that you can be doing as a recreational habit, like smoking or vaping, should be stopped if you want to improve your nitric oxide production. Your oral hygiene is important, but in a conscious way, meaning that we need to brush our teeth, yes. We need to clean our tongue, of course, yes, we need to clean our interproximal spaces for sure, but that doesn't need or require any detergent or any antimicrobial substance. We can do that mechanically, like we did for hundreds and hundreds of years. So these cosmetic products are not really necessary for keeping the oral hygiene in a normal way. Actually, research done that is comparing the usage of toothpaste in the toothbrushing 
and the toothbrushing alone, and the outcome is that there's absolutely no difference. So you are adding something that can be not beneficial for you, and on the other side, you you uh, you're not getting any additional benefits by using that. So for me, it doesn't really make sense. If you're using a natural toothpaste, maybe maybe it could be a good thing. Um, or at least it will not be a damaging element. But the reality is that if you want to use something for a very specific reason, you can use it for a certain amount of time, like say, for example, hydroxyapatite, because you have something maybe going on in terms of loss of mineralization. And I'm, I will understand that. But on a long-term basis, I don't think nothing is needed in terms of oral hygiene except for your toothbrushing technique. Like therapy is another really good way for improving nitric oxide levels. Oh, we know red light therapy actually is incredibly potent for in boosting your nitric oxide levels. So I definitely recommend that as an additional therapy when you have significant deficiencies in your levels of nitric oxide. Now, how we know that we have low levels of nitric oxide besides the clinical symptoms I just mentioned? Well, you can test there's some um, uh, rapid salivary nitrate test that you can put your uh, saliva on the tip of those strips, and then you can measure by a color code how much nitrites you're getting com from the nitrate conversion from uh, your oral microbiome pathway. So this is really a good indicator if you want to know that your oral microbiome is able to convert nitrates into nitrites, and therefore another probably good indicator of oral dysbiosis. So this is something that should be standardly applied in, in dental practices. You can get them um, uh, in, in, uh, online and you can use them on a frequent basis and track your progress in terms of improving the conversion of nitrates into nitrites. And also, of course, as a consequence, and knowing how much nitrates you're recirculating to your mouth to become available and converted into nitrites. So the other good thing about the uh, foods is that they can provide probiotics and postbiotics and other things that can be balancing for the oral microbiome and the gut microbiome. So I'm always, always recommending probiotic foods, prebiotic foods as much as possible, um, and then not not overconsumption, but a conscious consumption. And most mostly I'm always encouraging consistency in the consumption rather than huge amounts. I don't some people they can tolerate only a tiny bit of sauerkraut, for example, or kimchi, and it's fine. As long as they do that consistently, they will still feed their microbiome pretty well. And, and so there's um, other things like, for example, food rich in polyphenols are also amazingly beneficial for the gut and oral microbiome. Uh, so we, we have a very good amount of foods available and easily uh, found in grocery stores that they can be beneficial for balancing your microbiome in the mouth and the gut. And again, the oral hygiene Avoidance of antimicrobials and fluoride and antiseptics in general, for me, it's critical. Coconut oil pulling in general, it's, it's not a beneficial therapy or a strategy for the oral microbiome. It can be used with consciousness if there's some significant event going on that requires some usage of antimicrobials, but it has to be done on a short-term basis. Again, long-term basis derives into imbalances and depletion of the richness of the oral microbiome, leading to a lowering in the ability for producing all these essential molecules for human health. And, and again, boosting. So if you test and you see that you can make enough nitrites out of the nitrate conversion, and you are testing for those, and you see there's nothing really showing up in the color bands, and you're in the light side of the color bands, um, and so it's showing that you're low or depleted. Well, start supplementing. 
take a supplement, increase, improve your diet and every other aspect in terms of boosting the production of nitric oxides through the conversion of nitrates into nitrites. Um, but also you can get a good supplement to add more nitrates to match the nutritional levels we need of those nitrates in an optimal level for producing nitric oxide also in optimal amounts. Um, so this is for me critical. And I think just to close um, this topic is that the management right now of the healthy nitric oxide levels, it is a critical piece of the puzzle for human health. Dentists, they should incorporate this type of analysis on a standard basis because they they have the best access to this cavity and with their clinical knowledge, they can empower people to know more about this. But also you as a consumer, everyone that's, that's listening to this, as a consumer, knowing this, you know that there's something to be done and something to be avoided for improving your nitric oxide production. So now not only you can be very proactive in the things that you can incorporate on a daily basis, but also you can avoid things that can be detrimental for the production of nitric oxide in healthy levels. Because at the end of the day, everything you're doing for in boosting your nitric oxide levels will make everything else in your body better. So hopefully this gives you a lot of uh, good takeaways and that you can empower your life decisions to improve your nitric oxide levels, also to maintain a balanced um, ecosystem for your mouth microbiome, staying, being more proactive in terms of the decision-making of any type of intervention that you might need to get in your mouth and understanding how important is the symbiotic relationship between the mouth microbiome and the gut microbiome to improve the overall human health.